Professional at a Red Bull 2, teammate of Caden Clark and U.S. Youth National Team veteran, all that and more on today's episode with the American Tiago himself, Daniel Edelman. Los Gates. At 17 years old, he just signed his first professional contract with New York Red Bulls 2. Daniel Edelman, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Congrats on the contract, by the way. You know, that's a, that's a big deal. Your first professional thing. I imagine that you've already got a paddock, a Lambo, and a full designer closet with that bag. <laughs> no, I mean, I wish, man. Uh, you know, that, that's that's for the years to come. But, you know, it, it's a, it's an honor to, to sign the first contract. And I'm really happy for what the future is future's to come. What's the plan that New York has laid out for you now that you've signed professionally and have a full season ahead of you? Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's going to be an exciting season. The plan is to to play with RB two uh, this season and you know try to try to make playoffs and do the best I can and perform really well with the team. And then you know obviously the goals for for next year and the future are to to get that first team deal and then eventually you know make my way to Europe. For this specific 2021 season, what are you hoping for? Definitely to to make an impact on the team. And that's, you know, I've never been a, a true goal scorer in my life or, you know, an assist. But I think this season for me, big goals are mine are scoring goals and getting assists for the team, even though I'm playing a, a defensive midfield position. Do you envision that things are, are changing and will be different now that you've signed professionally? Or is it sort of just day by day and keep going how you are? How I look at it is just day by day and uh, really just focus on training and getting on the field and doing it every single day. And you can't take a day off because, you know, this is the pro life right now. This is, this is a job. It is a little bit different being a professional athlete now in the days of COVID. But have you noticed maybe a little bit different things being in the, the media you've taken, interviews and such like that? Is Are things a little bit different or not really? I wouldn't say that they're completely different. No, I'm sort of still looking at everything the same way. I mean, it's definitely like a nice feeling now to know that like I'm a professional, but, you know, still gonna respect every, everyone's messages or anyone that reach out, reach, reaches out to me, you know, and, you know, give them their, their best advice or whatever they, whatever they have to say to me. You were the number 75 for Red Bulls. Is there a meaning behind that? Uh, there's no uh, no true meaning behind uh, the number 75. You know, it was my uh, last season uh, for the USL. Was, uh, it was just my number. And, you know, for this season, I mean, I had the choice uh, to, to pick a number, but I wanted to stick with 75 because, you know, that was my first number and uh, it was really special to me. You can be like Trent Alexander-Arnold, you know, have your own 66, 75, just one of those cool numbers yeah, that you don't yeah. often see. Exactly. With numbers, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. From rec leagues to Red Bull Arena, you've done it all and you continue to move on a path upwards. Would you have done anything differently to where you are today? I mean, not at all, man. It's been it's been a really great path for me from beginning at my, my middle school playing on the backfields mm-hmm. and from where I am today with the, the New York Red Bulls too. I mean, it's been quite a journey and I hope this is this is only the beginning for me, this contract. Um, you know, I've come a long way. I've worked really hard for it, but, you know, never going to be satisfied and always going to want more. Let's rewind a bit back to 2020 when you had five appearances with two starts and even a goal in the USL championship. What a moment in your career, having the, that time in the championship. That was a special, special moment for me. I was just super happy with the goal um, against Philly Union too. Um, that night, it was just earlier in the day, I hadn't even known that I was going to going to be starting in the match. So that kind of caught me off guard. Um, and then to go and score a goal in that game, that just it put it, it put everything together and really, really showed me that like this is this is what I want to do in my life. What's running through your mind at that moment when you slot that ball past the goalkeeper for your first goal in the USL championship? Yeah, I mean, when uh so Jake LaCava had played me through, great ball from him, and you know, I took my touch forward to goal and I looked across the the box and there wasn't really uh, an option so I was like hey this is my chance to go to goal here and you know went went right through right through his legs you know hey goal's a goal mm-hmm. but um I was just honestly just wanted to aim it for a corner ended up just trying to get it on frame <laughs> and you know lucky enough that, that it went in and you know got a good little knee slide in the corner celebrate the first goal you did have five appearances in the first six games of when USL came back and the championship did However, you wouldn't play again for the rest of the USL season. At this time, where you moved back to the academy, sort of out of the Red Bull 2 side? 
Um, so, I mean, I wasn't like, obviously I wasn't a signed right. Rebels two player. So I actually had a season ending injury. Uh, okay. um, I had a muscle injury. Mm. So I wasn't on the injury report. Um, but yeah, I, ha- I had injured a muscle um, in my quad. So I was, I was done for the season. A player that did make waves at uh, Red Bull and is making waves today, Kaden Clark, someone who you cross paths with while playing with the second team. As someone quite similar age to you, I believe he's like maybe in a month of your birthday, something like that. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I'm a month older than him. Yeah, okay. There there it is. There you go. Did you ever get to know Kaden? Yeah, I actually, I got to know Kaden uh, really well. I've known him for a long time, actually. Mm-hmm. We uh, In 2017, we had went to Spain together for the 2017 uh, ID2 uh-huh. National Selection Tour. We entered the, the MIC Cup. It was the Mediterranean International Cup. I mean, teams like Barcelona, Espanol, Inter Milan were, were all um, participated in the tournament. And me and Kate were on the same team, and we really got to know each other well there uh, during the tournament. We had lost to Inter Milan in the quarterfinals and penalty kicks. But, I mean, I, I got to know Kate really well during that trip, and that trip was uh, really special, and it was awesome. What makes Kaden's game so special? Yeah, Kaden, he was super fun to play with. Uh, you know, it, it's, it is super important to have a good connection with a with another midfielder someone that gets positional awareness but i mean for him it's just finding those pockets behind an opposition's defensive midfielders he just gets into such good spaces that it's super easy to for as a six to just get on the ball and you can look your head up and find him in the in between the gaps he's just going at players and super composed and uh, silky smooth on the ball that you know when he gets on the ball you know something's going to happen do you have any insider bits maybe about Caden or the teammates on on this team that, you know, you know little stories and stuff like that? A little story for, for Caden. I mean, it's n- nothing much, but I mean, we, we were at uh, the hotel during the tournament and I mean, we, we had great, great meals, you know, a buffet, a buffet style for dinners and stuff. And I mean, the kid would just eat as many of the desserts as possible <laughs> um, that were offered at the buffet every night. And I just, I just thought that was uh, super funny with, uh, you just, you just didn't care. He was all in it for the desserts. Nice. Maybe that's the secret sauce to, to give you that extra bit of pace uh, when it matters. Switching gears back into the U S youth national team talk. You have a few caps with under 16s. How would you reflect on your time with U S camps? Yeah. I mean, first of all, it's just an honor to, to be at these U S camps, you know, you're, you're wearing the badge, but the camps that I went to, they've been super fun and the level is extremely high. It's super competitive. You know, everyone's fighting for a spot here. You know, there's a bunch of guys that are called into camps. You want to be on the team, but I mean, the experiences that I've gone overseas and, and with, with the Nike friendlies, they, they've truly impacted, you know, my development and, and my play and performance and my growth. How close have you gotten with this age group with this pool? Yeah, su- super close with the guys, um, you know, whether that's at, at team meals or hanging out at hotels and we're able to have banter with each other, but, you know, also take it, take it everything seriously and, you know, everyone's backing each other up and we're always going to be there for each other. As someone who is, you are directly involved with the next generation of U.S. talent, what do you believe that sets you apart from previous eras? Yeah, definitely in previous eras, there's sort of been like attraction towards, you know, maybe the the taller guys, mm-hmm. the bigger guys, the faster guys. I think that what, what I can offer to the U.S. national team pools and camps is just sort of encompassing all of those attributes, not always in, you know, I'm still, still developing, you know, I still have this a slender frame, but I mean, you know, you just got to think faster, wanting to, to win more in the passion that I can bring and being, getting on the ball, even if the, the physical side w- won't be there. In the pool itself, are there any maybe weird mannerisms or again, insider bits of your teammates? I think Moses has a routine to, he watches a certain show. I think some some anime shows um, before before a game that he watches that always gets him and you know works for him because man, what a player he is. You're on record saying that Liverpool's Thiago Alcantara is a player that you look up to personally. When you watch his game, what do you see that that really strikes you as amazing? Definitely with Thiago, it, it just has to be his ability to, to turn on the ball, how quick he is, and like how low he gets. To, to the floor because you know it, it's definitely difficult as a sick you know when you get the ball from a center back or goalkeeper when there's a man on your back what, what are you going to do with the ball and he just seems to always have an answer and always so composed on the ball and can really set the tempo of a game just because of his 
incredible technical abilities. Throughout your entire football loving career, whether it's been you're watching it, you're playing it, anything, what's been your favorite memory of the game? With PDA, um, we were in California at the, the U15 showcase. It was the last day of the showcase, and my team was going up against FC Dallas. And we actually had won that game 2-1. to one. It was an absolute nail-biter. It was probably one of the most fun and, and intense games I've ever played in. That season, with my, my side, we were an, an incredible U15 team. And to, to, to pull off that win for such a, an amazing FC Dallas side, it just truly meant so much to me and to the team that... You know, a side like PDA, non-MLS, could really defeat a team like, like FC Dallas. If you could pick three midfielders from any year of the game and put them into a squad, anyone past or present, who would those players be? No, yeah. My midfield, definitely. I've always been a Steven Gerrard fan. Okay. Um, yeah, I just want to me- mention him, like, just as Tiago, like, but Steven Gerrard, you know, just a great player and great person. Paul Scholes has to be my my midfield. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, small guy. Yeah. Uh, always, but never being afraid to get stuck into a tackle. And then the other midfielder, I probably, I probably would have to have uh, Iniesta. If we're, if it were to happen in real life, we just sort of swipe away the whole United Liverpool thing. Yeah. When you look back on this podcast in a year's time, what message would you give to your future self? I would want my future self to just continue to work, never, never give up. There's going to be further obstacles in the future, and you know, it, it's those that can tackle them, tackle the obstacles, face them, and then leap over them and continue can continue to be great champions. They, they do extra, they do more. And I think that's what I would want to tell my, my future self. Let's get it. Daniel, I hope to see you at the 2026 World Cup Manila Stadium Final. Thanks for coming on. Cool. Thank you so much. <laughs>